Hey guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, it's going to be a very short video. I'm going to be going over amenorrhea, which is absence of menstrual flow. But before we get started, as always, please, I'm going to ask you to uh, support my channel by liking this video. You're going to love it, so press that thumbs up button now so you don't forget. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. All right, so let's get started. Amenorrhea, this is the absence of menstrual flow. This is a clinical sign of a variety of disorders. Generally, the following circumstances should be evaluated. So when the patient comes in and they're experiencing amenorrhea, one, absence of both menarche and secondary sexual characteristics by um, 13 years of age. So when we're talking about the absence of menstrual flow, one of those um, conditions can be that the patient hasn't had menarche. When you say that word menarche, that means the first menstrual period. So they haven't had their first menstrual period. And look, secondary sexual characteristics by the age of 13, secondary sexual characteristics such as those breast buds or um, um, the hips getting wider, right? Those um, sexual characteristics that you feel see in the female. Two, the absence of menses by age 15 years old, regardless of normal gro growth and development. Three, the absence of menstruation within five years of those breasts developing. Or a uh, six month or more cessation of menses. So she's had her menstrual period before. Now, all of a sudden she stops having it and it's been six months. And something I also want to bring to your attention, it's been six months uh, well, we'll talk about that later, so I won't bring it to your attention now, but she's had her cycle, then it stopped, and it's been six months that she hasn't had it. Delay of onset is known to be related to malnutrition, starvation, such as that with an anorexia. Now, I highlighted this because this has been seen as test questions, especially in psych. So this is important for those, you know, those patients who are anorexic. A lot of times what we see is not only if they're anorexic, let's say they're like very intense into sports, especially sports that um, depend on them not having a high BMI, that can cause their menstrual cycle to actually stop. Girls who exercise strenuously before menarche, that first period, can have delayed onset of menstruation until about 18 years of age. Amenorrhea is one of the classic signs of anorexia nervosa. Remember what I told you about that word classic? Anytime you are studying and you see that word classic about anything, that means you need to know it. Exercise-associated amenorrhea can occur in women undergoing vigorous physical and athletic training, and it's thought to be associated with many factors. The factors you don't need to know, well, I shouldn't say you don't need to know. You need to know everything in this book. Let, let me rephrase that. The factors, I really haven't seen test questions on them. So make sure you know it, but I haven't seen any test questions on them. But what I have uh, highlighted here, you do need to know, and I want you to um, notice something. This same thing that they're talking about, that strenuous exercise that can cause the woman to have amenorrhea, we're also seeing it over here. Remember I told you when you're studying and you're seeing the author repeating the same information, they're doing it for a reason. That means it's important. You're most likely going to see it as a test question. And I've seen it as test questions many, many times. You need to know this. Let's go over management. So when a, stre uh, when a stressor known to predispose a woman to hypothalamic amenorrhea has been identified, initial management involves addressing the stressor, whatever is causing that amenorrhea to happen. The nurse works with the woman to help her identify, cope with, and eliminate sources of stress in her life. Now they're giving you um, examples. Deep breathing exercises and relaxation techniques are simple but effective stress reduction measures. Also, biofeedback or massage therapy can be helpful. Referrals for psychotherapy can be indicated. Now, as a nurse, you're not going to write that referral, but it is the responsibility of the registered nurse to ask the healthcare provider for the referral. The PN, I'm, I'm speaking not for real life, guys, for testing purposes. The PN does not ask the healthcare provider for the referral. The registered nurse does. 
If a woman's exercise program is thought to contribute to her amenorrhea, several options exist for management. You want to decrease the intensity, the frequency, or duration of training, or modify the diet to include appropriate nutrition for age. Why? Because on the last page, we saw two things that can cause amenorrhea. One, malnutrition. For example, that patient who's anorexic and not eating, um, not ingesting or having enough calories to survive, to um support life, right? So malnutrition can cause amenorrhea, but also um intense exercise. So you're going to teach a patient not to stop exercises, so not to stop exercising, but to decrease the intensity, the strength of those exercises and the duration, the amount of time that they exercise. And of course they have to have proper nutrition. Many young female athletes may not understand the consequences of low uh, density or low bone density or osteoporosis. Nurses uh, can point out the connection between low bone density and fra uh, stress fractures because this can cause um, also the patient to have a low bone density, especially if they're not getting enough intake of calcium and vitamin D, and that can lead them to have fractures easily. Research on recommended dosages of, look at this, calcium and vitamin D. Remember, calcium makes the bone stronger. Vitamin D helps you absorb the bone. So recommended dosages of calcium, vitamin D, and potassium is inconclusive for women experiencing amen amenorrhea with, female, with the female athlete triad. Oral contraceptives can be helpful in amenorrheic women. Look at this. But they're usually not used in young women with amenorrhea that's associated with female athlete triad unless, you know, specific issues warrant such. So for those type of patients, when we're talking about the female athlete, it's those two things, guys decrease the intensity and decrease the duration. Then obviously if it's hypothalamic, the cause uh, we're going to try to relieve those stressors that the patient has. And if it's due to nutrition or starvation, such as in the anorexic patient, of course, we're going to teach them about proper nutrition, but also encourage proper nutrition. Many times that patient will have to be on an inpatient unit for a certain amount of time. But guys, this is your um, teaching for the amenorrhea and the uh, treatment options. So please, in the comment section, let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover more in depth. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.